ไม่ละมากะเนาะคุณละตะมากะลูกคุณเอกองเสียขั้นอันทาเรไม่มาได้งั้นสายาคุณละตะมากะอธุกุสเลมิสเตอร์ทอมแอนดรูเนมีเม
So the conglomerates, Met and Mel and the 106 business subsidiaries and others that are under those, those entities. Also cutting off revenue in any, in any other way that we can identify, such as uh, cutting off uh, uh, oil and gas revenues, the Myanmar oil and gas enterprise, for example. Uh, <clears throat> right now, the, 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 the military, they're acting like a, a, a criminal enterprise, like, like, like gangsters. They, they have now, they're stealing the money that, is rightfully, that rightfully belongs to the people of Myanmar uh, through Myanmar oil and gas. And so we're uh, encouraging that there be a sanctions regime that cuts that flow of revenue off, as well as sanctions regimes that freeze the assets of, of the, the, the junta wherever it is in the world. So we know that that's occurred in the United States, for example. Assets have been frozen uh, approximately a billion dollars, U.S. dollars worth. Assets that frozen in the United States. Can you elaborate a bit more how much is it? And how long are they going to as freeze asset? And is there any other way around the wall where they have tried to remove or transfer back to Burma? Well, I'm not. I'm not an expert. Let me start by saying that. But I, I'm. I'm talking to. <laughs> I'm talking to experts who advise me that that uh, it, first of all the the hunter, they try to get assets out of the United States. They had, they had uh, assets in U.S. based financial institutions in U.S. currency, U.S. dollars. So, so the same, approximately. approximately 1 billion, approximately 1 billion U.S. dollars. So uh, the U.S. was able to act quickly to stop that from happening. So we've, we've, we've frozen those assets. They don't, they can't have access to them. And similar, similar action can be taken in other, in other countries of the world. Um, And it's a matter of being able to trace and track those assets to see where they are, and then they probably have if quite a country will be willing to Singapore too, right? I understand that they do. I don't know how much. I, I don't know in what currency. I'm, I, I don't know the details about Singapore, but but Singapore uh, comes up often as a as a potential area where where there are assets that. Um, again that could be could be impacted you also mentioned about some kind of uh, united nations that are i mean the nations that are, have common interests and common common like uh, willingness to act on burma uh, how far has gone how many country like have you spoken um, could you please ex elaborate a bit more about on on that Well, right now there are there are approximately there are over 40 countries right now that have some form of of, of sanctions, including the, the, the various countries of the European Union. And so we have presented, uh, for example, the European Union with a uh, an analysis of their sanctions, the history of their sanctions, the current sanctions regime that they have, and and opportunities for them to strengthen strengthen those sanctions. So so they're. Uh, looking at those, examining those those options, um, and engaged in conversation within within the European Union um, to you know to move to move forward. There's been a lot of interest. Um, we've spoken with other countries. I don't want to elaborate too much. Uh, I don't want to speak out of school, if you will. Um, but we've we've been generating some some strong interest, including uh, by the United States, uh, in in these this this basic concept of collaborated coordinated uh, sanctions um, and uh, and I have you know I, I've been getting uh, we've been reaching out to countries uh, saying that we are here to help you and provide you with that, any information that you may that you may that you may want or could need um, and we'll answer any questions and we so we've been doing that and we've also been getting some inquiries from some countries about uh, what the options might be what this might might look like so Um, I'm hoping to be a resource. Uh, we you know we propose that this be considered by countries. I think they are considering this kind of approach, and we're there to help and support them in 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 any way. How about the? Uh, is there you know among this coalition of the, if you will, like nations? Um, how about the neighboring country? I mean, the West Western countries are quite. I mean, not surprisingly, they're always backing the democratic movement in Burma. But how about like 
the neighboring country ASEAN, uh, for example, China? Well, you obviously this is a, a very very important question, and and the and first let's start with ASEAN. They they have a obviously a um, a great deal at stake here. Uh, Myanmar, needless to say, part of the ASEAN community, um, and I think it is certainly a a, a big negative for ASEAN as a whole to have a pariah state, you know, in, 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 the, in the midst of, of ASEAN, um, that in which the economy is, uh, is, is deteriorating, the conditions uh, from the point of view of, of, of having stability to a partner that's going to be engaged positively, socially, economically, diplomatically. Um, this is a major problem for, for ASEAN. It can't be it, it can't be denied. And you and of course, among the, the, the many issues and concerns, uh, have to be n- nations that are right on the border. Look at look at Thailand. I mean, the, the we we've known from the past that the, there have been enormous pressure on um, those bordering Myanmar when there has been the, the kind of violence and clashes and, and 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 problems that have occurred within Myanmar. They can often. Uh, show up impacting negatively neighbors, including right on the border. So there's a great deal of interest, it seems to me, that ASEAN has. And I know that there have been some countries that have been speaking out. They've been critical of what's happened. They've called for the release of political prisoners. Uh, they've been um, uh, outspoken to a, to an extent that I, frankly, am not used to seeing from ASEAN. Normally, this principle of non-interference translates into, well, I won't say anything uh, negative at all about what's going on within your country. Those, that's your business. That's your internal affairs. So I've got. I think we've all been kind of accustomed to this, but now to see these statements of concern and and calls for the release of political prisoners, etc., uh, it gives you an indication of just how um, uh, concerned ASEAN countries are about what's developing uh, in Myanmar. Um, and I know that there has been some some interest among ASEAN countries to try to engage the, 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 the junta, try to have discussions so that uh, they could maybe help to pull them back from this horrible, horrible path that, that they are on. Um, and uh, so, you know, I, I'm hoping that, uh, that ASEAN will step up uh, to meet the, this this great challenge because it's interest it's in its interest to do so. Now China, um, talk about a country in which they have a direct interest in in not seeing Myanmar inflamed. You know, it's 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 China. Um, they they have obviously historically have been there to um, uh, protect the generals from. Uh, UN Security Council action. They, they, the veto or the threatened veto is always present. Um, they're a source of weapons to the generals. They have their Belt and Road initiatives that they, they are engaged in. They have, so they have economic interests at stake. So China has a, you know, a great deal um, of self-interest involved in trying to do whatever I would think would be a positive role, take a positive role in helping to um, head off things getting even worse than they are right now. And, and believe me, they're really bad right now, but they could be worse. And so it would be um, in China's interest to, 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 to prevent that from happening. And again, uh, of course, we've seen some positive statements from the Security Council, presidential statement um, calling for the restoration of the process of movement toward democracy, uh, opposition to the violence, uh, the release of political prisoners. Um, but at the same time, uh, there has been no outright statement of opposition to the coup. And there has been no action that the Security Council has come up with. And I think part of that is because of the influence that, that, that China has, the role that China plays within the Security Council. Um, so I'm hoping that Given the statements that China has made, given the, the, the public criticism that it has uh, voiced, despite the tradition of them not being critical, that this again indicates that they're worried, they're concerned, 
and that I'm hopeful that they can play some kind of a role since they have a relationship with those involved in this um, outrage, that they will be able to um, be a force for, for good, a positive force moving forward, and that they will choose to exercise uh, the, the position that they're in, uh, which I think is a significant position. So we've seen some positive movement from ASEAN and China. Um, I hope to see, I hope to see more. So what you're saying is, uh, you know, based on your past experience, I mean, not just in Burma, but, but in around the world, when it comes to human rights abuses by military dictatorships, um, the action the Burmese military has taken recently put them in the, in the situation that nobody can defend them internationally. That's correct. That is exactly correct. They are more and more and more isolated. And the fact that um, they're engaged in these, these atrocities, and, and of course, I think the, the evidence that even they realize uh, how untenable their position is, is that they, they've had to make up stories. Uh, they, they, they've had to say, well, the protesters are violent. You know, we're, we're acting with what they described as utmost restraint to only protect security and stability within the country against these violent protests. Now, I don't know of a single person on planet Earth that thinks that that has any credibility whatsoever, except maybe a small group within, you know, within the junta leadership. I don't think the, 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 the military believes any of that. It's just preposterous. It's outrageous. And it just shows you how completely out, out of uh, touch they are with, uh, w w with the world. But the fact that they would try to lie so grotesquely to try to cover up these atrocities means precisely that they, they feel uncomfortable with how they're positioning in the world. They, they, they know that what they're doing, the truth of what they're doing is indefensible. And so they're, they're making up stories, fabrications to try to justify what, and I think frankly, what they would like to see, they, they would like to find any evidence whatsoever to say, oh, this is not, um, uh, a military uh, attacking innocent, peaceful people. This is a civil war. This is, these are combatants. Or the, this is, you know, us trying to uh, confront violent people. Uh, that's, that's all th this is. Um, because the truth is working very much against them. The truth of people, and, and it's extraordinary. I mean, this entire nation rising up this civil disobedience movement that has been so effective, so agile, creative. Um, the, the, the young people that are out front of this, Generation Z, um, you know, people are talking about this, just how, how powerful this, um, this peaceful army is. Um, so th there is something really, really important happening here in the country that has captured the attention and the imagination of, of the, the, the people of the world and is working clearly to undermine the, the junta. And I, and I frankly think that their, their acts of aggression, their continued outrages, um, they, it, it, these are acts of desperation. I think that they're, 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 they're feeling that the only way for them out is to increase the terror, uh, you know, in, in, increase the violence. And maybe, maybe they, they, they're thinking we can go people into violence and then we can justify whatever violence that we ensue. Cause we can just, we, you know, they, you know, it's, it's Syria, right? It's, it's a civil war. It, you know, this is all this is. So, um, but it's not working. It's not working. And, and the people are of the world are more and more and more supporting people on the ground in Myanmar and this extraordinary widespread, diverse, diverse um, movement. I mean, I've never seen Myanmar 
so unified as I've, I've, I've seen it now. And, you know, you got to, if, if there's one thing that you can say about the generals, well, they, they've unified the country. Um, unfortunately for them, it's all unified against them, against the junta. Um, but, but it's something that is um, remarkable to see. And, and as I talk to people around the world about this, uh, this is something that has just has, has captured people's attention. Uh, back to quickly back to the sanction. I mean, you mentioned about um, particular sanction about freezing the income from the oil, and which is of course right now coming out to Thailand and coming out to China, um, and and the French company involved, Thai company involved, and of course the Chinese own company involved. Um, how far it has gone? I mean, what development have you seen actually freezing these fund to the general? Um, I can't. I can't tell you. I, I don't know what steps have been taken. I've. I've been. Let me say, in general terms, I've been asked for more information about what we are suggesting. Um, we have. Um, I've been engaged with people that would have great expertise in in how in, in the various options that can be deployed, um, and we're trying to convey that information to people that have have questions. I, I can't really say much much more than that, but we're trying to be a, a source of information um, to those who would 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 like to pursue it, this this as a potential step. Uh, they're they're. They're interested in the the facts. How how would this work? Um, what are the mechanisms, etc. But I'm not sure. I don't believe that any you know that anything's been engaged at this point. I could be wrong. You know, we we're just providing information and analysis. Uh, what people do, obviously, that they need to make those judgments. Um, but we're providing information and analysis. Okay, um, and one of your main um, call for the international community is that to not to recognize the military gender, um, and and uh, right now the, the the member of parliament who were elected uh, in the, the last election in 2020, they also form the committee representing the parliament, and uh, there is also a entering acting government. Um, where is the international stand? I mean, with, with your connection, with your talk to the individual governments, where, where, where is that situation? That's, that's a very good question. And, and um, there's not a clear answer that I can, I can give you. I mean, we're, I'm encouraging countries to not, not recognize in any way this, this hunter because it's, it's, it's illegitimate. And as, um, and as one, one, one representative of one country described it to me, he said, you know, this is a criminal enterprise. Uh, you know, his words, you know, th these are gangsters. And, uh, and I said, well, it's an interesting way to put this. This is obviously illegal. Uh, they're using ruthless tactics. So I can see exactly where you're, where you're coming from, how you see this. And I said, I think what's important, no matter what you call them, don't call them legitimate and don't recognize them as such. And, we and then with respect any, to- Sorry to interrupt. We haven't seen any country sorry. really recognizing them, right? I have not, I have not, I have not. Um, so I, I, this, this is uh, something that we continue to, uh, to, to talk about and to uh, uh, discourage countries from recognizing, rec recognizing them as legitimate. And how about the, the CRPH, the people representing the parliament? Well, certainly the fact that the CRPH were elected by people, um, they have a, a much more credible claim. Their, their claim to being legitimate is based upon uh, the support of the people uh, as opposed to by virtue of having a gun uh, and having weapons. So it's a much more legitimate a legitimate claim. And I know that they're in the process of, of uh, getting more more organized. Of course, the big challenge, needless to say, is that so many are in detention, the leadership in detention. 
it's a it's a very very hard situation that they're in very very difficult conditions in which to operate in any in any form um but i think that they're um uh they they they're working very very hard they're an incredible group of people that are stepping forward um and uh and i've been had the privilege to to meet and engage with uh uh with 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 many of them um so i think they're on the right path i think that their their voices are extremely important i think that them being engaged with with uh, with countries and with governments extremely important and i'm um, and i'm and i'm hoping that 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 that's going to continue during throughout this whole uprising um there has been a lots of appeal and call from demonstrators and people inside the country and and also from the CPH um to get a UN intervention and uh, help you and to come in and i'm sure you have seen lots of these poster about how many dead body you and need to see before the intervention came in um how realistic you know the people can expect from the united nation intervention and and i want to hear your 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 advice and your message to 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 the people in the country well i think number one we need to deploy strategies that we think are going to have the greatest impact that will have the greatest chance of success and that they be uh strategies that will have the potential to have the least harm to innocent people i think that the outrage that we all feel uh is to see people being brutalized uh innocent peaceful protesters even if people are protesting people being shot in their own homes um point blank range it is it is just outrage outrageous so it i begin with the with the basic premise number one we need to take action this is unacceptable we need the united nations to be engaged to the to the extent that we can get the full engagement of the united nations in a way that will be the most effective uh in overturning this atrocity and with the fewest um casualties the the, the least harm to to the people of of Myanmar i think as as i've talked to many countries about the various options on that that might exist i think that uh there is great interest in this whole notion of let us move forward to uh apply the kind of tough much tougher sanctions much more coordinated much more targeted much more widespread um and and use those approaches with member states of the united nations to the extent that they can be engaged in this working together to to do this um and at the same time minimizing the damage so so even with sanctions for example are there ways in which we could have the most powerful sanctions possible that will hurt the bottom line of the of the junta while at the same time minimizing the potential negative impact that that would have on the the people of Myanmar so this framework of this having this this discussions what what can be done what should be done is is just that maximum impact minimum harm so that is where the united nations is right now that, that this is where the countries that i'm engaged with i'm talking to um uh that is exactly where they where they are and 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 my message to the people of 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 Myanmar is that you have you have friends in in the in the the world who care a great deal about what's going on and are outraged about what is happening to you and we want to be the international community is seeking to be partners that is going to have the greatest impact and do the the, the least least harm and the extraordinary um approach that are, that's being taken by the people of Myanmar in its peaceful um but nonetheless uh tenacious uh widespread unified opposition to this this uh this junta 
um, is, is, is very powerful. It's an extraordinary asset that is, um, as I say, is, is, is really captured the world. And when I talk to people around the world, I'm hearing constantly about uh, just how clear the, uh, this, this coup and this military regime, clearly unpopular this is, and how clearly the vast majority of people in that country are clearly opposed to it. So my message is build on that strength. Um, don't allow the junta to make this what it isn't. Um, that, oh, it's just, you know, we're trying to uh, just, we're, we're using um, utmost restraint to deal with violent people. Um, that's, that's a complete fabrication. It's a complete distortion. It's a complete lie. And they're using that distortion and that lie precisely because of the power of this nonviolent, uh, peaceful uh, movement using a range of tactics, civil disobedience tactics, um, different approaches being deployed, people from all walks of life, all ages, all ethnicities, all religions coming together to show and demonstrate just how wide and deep and broad that is. That is my recommendation. And, 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 and what I will continue to do is um, push and advocate as, 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 as much as I can for the world to support uh, the, this movement, this peaceful movement, this powerful movement um, in a way that will have even greater impact. I think we, we, words of condemnation are fine, but they're wholly insufficient. We need action that can have the greatest impact on the junta and minimal casualties of the people of Myanmar. And, and that's what we need to build on. That's what we need to strengthen. And that's what I'm, I'm committed to doing. Thank you very much, Mr. Tom Andrew. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, who Thank you very much.